Good day everyone. The live stream preview for Season SS4 is now live and I'll be going through it. Um, I read the patch notes last night because they came out early and um, after watching the Erica uh, reveal trailer, I'm going to show that first because it is insanely good. animation level to that trailer is far better than any other reveal trailer that we've had so far in Torchlight Infinite and that alone makes me hyped for the new season. Uh, there are things in the patch notes that are really really interesting uh, which is fantastic so I'll get into them in a minute. I'm just going to quickly watch a little bit of the live stream and then as I see things, I'll stop, I'll go through it, and then uh, give my opinion. Another thing coming with next season is the one-year anniversary celebration pack for Torchlight Infinite. Get you a back accessory, uh, some Jagged Primos, a couple of Appearance Boon coupons, some Pack Spirit pulls, um, Appearance Boon again, and finally a Pack Spirit optional pack. Not sure what that is, but it's free pack spirits. Already, I'm more impressed with this uh, season preview than last one, um, as the it seems like they're going from country to country doing the season previews. Last season was uh, a different country. This season it looks like Russia, um, or a Russian accent at least. Um, and we'll just watch the first little bit and then I'll pause it. Finally fixed. Hello, hunters. Welcome to Whisper and Miss Season Preview Livestream. I'm Z, and I'm Detective currently in Miss Wild. It's great to see you all. Just now, I received a briefing from my client Torchlight, and I'm going to share all my first hand information about this new season with you, hunters including new season class of gameplay, new hero traits, new outfits, and a series of important future adjustments. I'll let you watch the, uh, the season mechanic yourself. However, it honestly looks like City of Eterna 2.0. Um, yeah. When I first read that you get Mistville Intel. For some reason, I thought this would be similar to um, in Path of Exile. You got Syndicate. Uh, however, it's just the currency to unlock the passive skill tree. So, and you can get food and stuff that gives buffs. It seems um, it's a little bit different to Eterna, which is great. Um, and it you keep going until you can't anymore. Uh, if you reach stage fifteen you get some bonus uh, loot. 
This is what the uh, the talent tree is going to look like for the season mechanic. It's just a different layout for the same effect as every other season. Introducing a completely original build that is definitely not in every other game ever made. Flicker strike, I mean blink attack. I have many activation mediums. I have prepared several powerful activation mediums builds. Now, for example, if Hunter is obtained activation medium blink attack by linking it to any attack skill, you can think to mentally blink to the nearest enemy and launch continuous attacks, or if they obtain the activation medium wind rhythm. So it seems that the activation skills have the main effect, the main downside, and then a couple of random extra abilities or affixes on the gear. So you're not only gearing up your character, you're looking for the activation mediums to drop with the additional extra uh, stats that you want on them. So you're basically, it, it's not as simple as I need a precision skill of blah. Now it looks like it's I need a precision skill with additional damage on it. That's how I interpreted uh, that anyway. There's been a lot of changes to Automoto in this patch. And this support seems insane. Well, as many passive skills as possible. Aura effect. Hmm. I don't really like this one. It looks like a uh, a skill swap for bossing. Which, uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Which in turn greatly reduces the strategic choices available. One aura? I don't see that one being useful. I wish I could have 104,000 energy. <laughs> <coughs> That'd be nice. However, the thing to take away from here is on the left used to have three passives. Now you have four passive slots. So they must be um, changing the either the total of energy that you can have or the amount required to uh, boost them up. This is an interesting helmet. I, I say it's interesting just because you'll be able to get a, a ton of movement speed. So if every stack of deflection, uh, minus 10% additional dot, dot damage taken and plus 10% movement speed, you can get three stacks of deflection on boots. So that's potentially 30% additional movement speed. Uh, one other thing to note, they have renamed erosion resistance to corrosion resistance. Just very minor, but... Um, enemies within 10 meters of around have lightning resistance equal to your corrosion resistance. Interesting. So it's a way of debuffing the enemy, but you're also having a debuff because of the corrosion res. So they've added, uh, or they've changed some of the um, legendaries that you get throughout the story. The story has also been revamped. You'll no longer do the first three chapters and then do all the maps and then do the maps again. Uh, I believe the story ends at the end of chapter three and then you enter the nether realm. So you're not needing to clear one of each map and then clear them again on tier one. I believe it'll go from chapter three into clearing. It, it may still be the story. However, you'll be progressing your nether realm as you go through. And certain bosses, uh, the patch notes said that you will get uh, certain legendary drops, and I think um, these three items are um, probably included in the drop pool. Lastly, some legendary gear that often appears during the story stages around Hunters has been optimized, such as the Siren Face Guard, which can now cause near but enemies to be affected by the Biting Cold Curse. 
Additionally, Frozen Sight can trigger Ice Shot when the Hunter applies Frostbite, and when combined with the Chest Armor Fan has them that triggers Split Arrow while moving, it can easily achieve automation. This easily obtainable early game legendary gear will undoubtedly become great helpers for hunters during their pioneering journey. The upper and lower limits stuff. of the core apexes for fine and precious legendary gear have been increased. This is great news for hunters who burst to the extreme. This kind of legendary gear often shines in various builds, and the Warden's Breastpin is one of them. Okay, this is what I thought earlier with the... Uh... With the legendaries, there, I don't know, I guess there's still rifts in the story campaign. However, now there is also treasure troves, which give specific Encounter bottlenecks in the main yeah. story. They can enter the treasure trove, filled with hidden treasures, to seek improvement. We have added to treasure troves in each chapter of the story, where hunters can gain a large amount of XP and specific legendary gear. In addition, to address the issue of abundant gear not bringing improvement to hunters. We have reduced the drop quantity of rare equipment, but adjusted the corresponding affixes and values to make their growth better. Finally, we have reworked the early netherlum confusion cards. With these cards, hunters can now obtain the items they desire in a more targeted manner. We hope that these changes will improve the early game process making it smoother, more challenging, and full of surprises. Ah, here we go. Set gear. In early stages. To address this issue, we have introduced the drops in early and mid game. Set gear typically comes in sets of six pieces, and hunters will receive additional set bonuses when equipping two, four, or six pieces. During the story stage and early netherrealm, Hunters can steadily obtain set gear and continuously improve themselves with the help of the set. In this way, hunters will have a clearer sense of their early goals and the experience will be smoother. However, it must be noted that the strength of the set is only suitable for early to mid game use. In the later stages, hunters will need to mix and match the gear that best suits them. After all, the quantitative builds of sets are limited, and we can't let them restrict the hunter's late game development. That's interesting. So, in, say, Diablo 3, you get the set, and that is your set for the entire game that you play. At least in this, it looks like it's a set to get you into, say, T6 or T7, um, and then you'll have enough farm ability to farm at the flame elementium and get the gear that you need to make your build work. All right, this is huge. Now everyone can use everyone's builds. Um, hopefully there's a bit of a better search function in the recommended builds, however. First up is the build recommendation system. In the new season, we have connected the recommendation data from all of the different servers. Now, Hunters can use build codes from any server and also share their own build codes with hunters on any server. In the last season, we introduced the customized filter feature, allowing hunters to define drop content according to their needs and enjoy a smoother loot experience. However, there are still some inconveniences in using custom filters, so we have restructured the filter condition editing interface to support convenient multi-selection of item types and affixes. In addition, we have added a filter leaderboard and a favorites folder. Hunters can make their filters public on the leaderboard, as well as download and collect their favorite filters from the leaderboard. Similar to the build recommendation system, filter codes can be used globally, but the leaderboards are separate for each server. We have added explanations of some important game systems, such as the trade house to the help manual, it's interesting that as the uh, the preview is going on, this um, gauge in the top right has been going down. Now it's gone red. Don't know if it's going to mean anything, but it looks kind of cool. What? <clears throat> Twin reflection. An item can be used an item that can be used to replicate gear. Now, I don't know if it's me, but if I created a 
six tier zero one-handed weapon I could use that to duplicate it so that's a mirror of Calandra I feel like that's going to be worth about 5,000 flame elements him and that can replicate any non-legendary gear in addition Flame Elementum has added 20 and 50 drop groups. New high value items have also been added to the fluorescent memory shards, such as the Death All the Stars for exchanging the Darkest Corroded Ultimar Legendary Gear and the Boundless Realm of the Divine for exchanging Space Rift. <laughs> it's funny that they are saying that they have added a bunch of new compasses. This is what the compasses used to be. You know. Once upon a time. Increasing drop rarity and adding extra monsters. Hunters can obtain these, these compasses through various gameplay <laughs> or from the trader back. and use them wisely to boost their netherrealm journey. In addition, we have increased the difficulty of stages in deep space mode. Hunters will need... This sounds pretty cool. The Trial of Divinity. You have God of War, God of Hunting... Um, oh, God of Hunting... God of War, God of Machines, God of Might. Those four compasses or um, mechanics now drop a key. Once you have enough keys, you can do this new game mode. Challenge. A brand new endgame mode. Trial of Divinity will be introduced in this season. Hunters need to obtain different Divinity Emblem through the Six Gods gameplay, collect all four emblems to enter the Trial of Divinity, complete the challenges, and advance to deeper levels, Notice proving the their strength the to the Six Gods. Crystal. The Trial of Divinity gameplay will produce a unique currency, Divinity Stone. By using Divinity Stones, Hunters can exchange precious rewards and the space-time wanderers blessings from Plus gods, including shot. various ultimate and tier legendary gear. Oh, by the way, the content of the Avarice Bounty has also been merged into Blessings from Gods, so we have replaced the Desire Bead Drop from the Cube gameplay with the Divinity Stone. Yeah. We will introduce the Trial of Divinity, Might, and other trials will be gradually unlocked in subsequent seasons. We believe that the Blessings from Gods will bring a unique and fresh experience for the Hunters, and we look forward to your outstanding performance in the Trial nice, of Divinity. The, uh... 500 bill hits there. The uh, cap has gone from 100 the billion. The queen led us with it together, billion. and the Lattis continent finally awakens from the endless long dream. However, in the new season, hunters still have a chance to encounter the Dream Lotus in the Netherrealm, interact with them, construct three dreams, and escape from nightmares, ultimately obtaining generous rewards in the Dream Bubble. In addition, we have designed. Did someone say vacuum loot? When hunters pick up items, all the same stackable items within the pickup area will be collected into the inventory at once. The compass you... And uh, one of the things that I wanted in Crow's Corner, that sounded like it confused them a bit, but, you know, it happened, which is good. Inventory at once. The compass you put in can now be saved. The last compass installed by the hunter will be automatically recorded, greatly simplifying their creation. We have also optimized the damage Notice numbers by adjusting their the, size uh, and animation, distinguishing different types of damage with different colors, yeah, and highlighting the highest damage dealt by the hunter within a certain period of time to help hunters perceive their growth. The screen shake effect will now be reduced as the skill speed increase. <clears throat> Drop sound effects, eh? Hopefully, oh, it looks like you have to equip them, so uh, you can choose the ones that you like or Hesitation. if she, her voice gets too The drop sound effects in this pack comes from a mysterious girl, and we believe her liveliness and optimism will add a lot of fun to your Netherrealm journey. Jackpot! Do you think it's enough to buy a house in the Netherrealm? This treasure looks so amazing! Something good will definitely happen today. When Erica accidentally enters the electric rainbow city filled with video games, what kind of adventures do you think will she encounter? There is... So the seven day reward for the anniversary, you get to choose a legendary 
uh, pack spirit. That's pretty interesting. If you didn't play the preseason, you weren't part of the beta test for Team Up, and hopefully they have made a lot of improvements. Um, it was rather janky in the preseason. It was quite laggy. Um, if you were in deep space and someone else wasn't, uh, like if you were up to 8-3 in Voidlands and someone else didn't like Voidlands, so they hadn't got it to 8-3, they couldn't join your map. Um, there was a, a bunch of issues with Team Up, so let's watch this and see if they have improved. During the exploration of the Netherrealm, hunters can join or create two-person teams to take on Netherrealm stages together. After forming a team, all members can choose to start the stage in either solo or team mode. Gives the resonance the beacons right and composites consumed in team up mode are the same as in solo mode, but the number of stage challenges is shared among all members. In team up mode, the pack spirit, trade card bonuses, and other bonuses are only affected by the initiator, not necessarily the team leader. After starting a stage in solo mode, the initiator can also convert it to a team stage in the stage selection screen. Team members can open the stage selection interface at the Netherrealm device and enter the already unlocked stages. However, please note that entering a team stage also requires you to unlock the corresponding time mark or difficulty in single player mod for that stage. Forming a team will bring a more the first age experience. When hunters cooperate to challenge the Netherrealm, the monster's strength will increase, while the hunter's XP and the overall drop from the stage will also be enhanced. We have designed various loop distribution methods for a team up, ensuring fairness while also providing a way to give loot to current teammates. The Maps team leader can modify minutes, the distribution so. method at any time, this and the changes like will be notified to the team in real time without affecting the ownership of already dropped loot. Before joining a team, you can see the current distribution method. Hunters, please be noted that the current team map feature is still is in the early stages and may experience issues such as lag and network fluctuation. Oh. Additionally, the so number of players the again. may not wow. satisfy all hunters. Interesting. You can trade between your friends for a limited um, amount of items and they'll be, a, be tradable one time up now, isn't it time to arrange gifts for our buddies? In the new season, the friend gifting feature will also be activated, allowing hunters to gift in-game items to their friends. Of course, to avoid our MT, we have limited the range of items that can be gifted, and the gifted items will not be tradable or giftable again. We I mean, if you're wanting to combat RMT, the person that's buying it is probably not going to on-sell it. So that whole argument is just... I believe that with this item symbolizing friendship, new hunters can overcome the challenges of the early stage more smoothly and grow into independent heroes. Of course, the two crowds didn't come back empty-handed. They have prepared a gift code for all hunters, enter this mysterious code in the game, and see what he can get. That's really... What is it? TLSS for Zulu. That is a really horrible font because that could be S or 5. It looks more like a 5 than an S, but I guarantee it's TLSS for Zulu. TLSS for Z. No. Oh. That's 300 primos. Better than nothing, I guess. I must say that this live stream preview was infinitely better than last season. If you like my season preview, feel free to share it with your fellow hunters. 400 balls. Crazy. Alrighty, quick look at the patch notes. It's available through the Discord. Um, as you can see, as scrolling down, there is a lot of patch notes. 
Alrighty, so a lot of this was touched on in the preview. Um, I don't recall if I paused or not, but basically Spellburst does not worth work with triggered skills anymore. However, now we have the activation mediums. So a lot of these are based around triggering uh, stuff like, um, say, the activation medium life. It's going to replace rhythm on your... Um, life potions or whatever uh, when life is below 20 to 95 percent always attempt to trigger the supported skill so that means every time it's off cooldown it will trigger uh, likewise with activation medium energy shield uh, you'll link that to um, the energy shield start with the um, force start with the um, unable to be interrupted and every time that is uh, down it will trigger and give you two seconds of uninterruptible energy shield regain curse um, always trigger multi-strike they've added rhythm for attack skills which is pretty cool another really interesting one for automoto is activation medium minion Upon entering the stage, trigger the support skill, replenishing the minions of the support skill to their upper limit. Uh, it also gives them 30 to 50% additional damage. So this is a must for any synthetic um, troop skill build uh, as 50% additional damage on its own is insane. Um, and not having to resummon your... Minions is really, really nice. Uh, the others, Command, etc. It's pretty cool. And there was Blink Attack in there somewhere as well, uh, which is pretty sweet. Erica sounds a lot of fun. Um, for every one meter moved, the next main skill will definitely inflict shock on the enemy as well as yourself. Um, while you are shocked, um, oh, you take less shock damage, so, you know, whatever. Uh, it's just inflicting a status effect on yourself. While shock status is active, you have 40% additional movement speed, and for every 1% movement speed, an additional 5% on hit damage, up to plus 50% additional damage. Um... I'm not going to read through all of Erica. I probably won't play her straight away. Um, however, she sounds a lot of fun. And I will no doubt play her um, in the season. There is a bunch of um, new legendaries. I can't recall seeing any in there that really stood out. These prototypes are... Uh, instead of needing the Forlorn Crystal, which goes for like 5,000 Flame Elementium, there'll be a far more common prototype, which will get that build going. Um, however, it won't be as strong. Same, same with the Surging Inspiration prototype, Thunder Jawbone prototype. So Thunder Jawbone, Surging Inspiration, and Forlorn Crystal will be super expensive. However, you can get these cheap alternatives, so you can at least play the build that you want to play. Uh, this is the set that you can get. Um, as you can see, it get, has some base um, abilities, a random elemental res, a hero trait exclusive, and set effect affix. Now, that is just one set across the board, and then you have your um, two, four, and six set abilities. Uh, personally, I will be playing... Um, Iris. So my two set bonus will be when the Spirit Magus uses a skill, there's an 8% chance to lose one layer of nourishment. Uh, 15 total res and plus one at Spirit Magus skill level. This is quite huge. And every four seconds a random Spirit Magus uh, buff is gained. Um, either an additional 200 growth, 60% attack, cast and movement speed. Um, which is pretty cool. New pack spirits. Um, 
gameplay adjustments. Uh, Cuba Rapacity has been adjusted um, for the talents that are needed, which is good. Got machines, monsters that appear have had um, their special fluorescent drops removed. Um, so God of Machines is going to be less profitable this season. However, remembering it also drops one of the four keys. So someone's got to be doing it so I can farm the divinity. Uh, that's what this point here is. Um, introducing a new endgame mode, Trial of Divinity. Players will obtain corresponding entry tickets. One from, one from God of War, God of Might, God of Hunting and God of Machines. Um, combine them to uh, attempt the Trial of Divinity, which features 50 di difficulty levels, um, and you get drops such as the Forlorn Crystal, etc. in there. Um, there was a really interesting point on God of Hunting, etc. God of Hunt will be more popular this season, because that is where you will get the Surge, Aurora, and um, whatever the life ring base is. It will not drop from the Traveler anymore, which is very, very interesting. Um, story adjustments. Um, excluding the content of Chapter 4 and 5, Hunters will enter the Nether Realm after the Chapter 3 story. So previously you would do chapter three and then you would do the air quotes rift gameplay where you would do, you would have to do each of the nether realm areas uh, and then get into the nether realm and do it again anyway. Nether realm adjustments that you saw in the video. Um, this is interesting. Nether realm quests no longer offer beacon rewards. So the beacons are going to cost more. Um, Don't know how I feel about that, but sure. Um, the early stage confusion card in the Nether Realm has been revamped, which is always a good thing. Um, seven air quotes new compass types, as you saw, they're just bringing back the old compasses with increased drop quantity, drop rarity, uh, rare gear drop, etc. Um, deep space has been moved to 8.2 plus. Previously you could do it in 8.0 and 8.1 as well. Now it is only 8.2. Uh, another major one, um, other than this point of the compass slot will now record the compass used, uh, which is great. Um, I was hoping they would also do it for the Nether Realm juice, but they didn't. Uh, unlocking conditions for compass slots are now modified to 8.1, and 8.4. Um, so you'll have to do uh, 8.4 to unlock all four slots. This is quite good. The confusion cards in late stages of Netherrealm have been streamlined. Most confusion cards, which are the cards that you choose on the map, uh, no longer have their four and six versions. It will just be two. So you don't have to weigh up, do I just go for, uh, I don't like these options, I'll just go with the two confusion for the 100% drop quant. Um, and I won't do these other ones. Now it looks like they'll all be two, so it'll be a much easier choice to make with the totals adjusted accordingly. Uh, drop stack of flame elementium can go up to 50 now, which is crazy, so... Uh, chalk and the um, other pack spirits that increase the chance of more flame fuel dropping will be even stronger. Uh, but it's across the board. Everyone will be finding far more flame elementium this season. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Twy Nightmare season pack spirit has been fixed. Um, it was... Uh, intentionally not fixed last season because they wanted more loot to drop. So that is a nerf 100% to that pet. However, I believe it'll still be quite strong. Um, 
using one Queen's Grace, the Queen of the Eternal Sun will no longer drop Enamor. So um, it'll be more in line with other bosses that don't have a guaranteed drop for the easiest game mode. This also means that a good Aura Enamor will now not be 30,000 Flame Elementium, it will be 100,000 Flame Elementium. Um, which is absolutely mental. This is interesting. The Tide Master's exclusive gear, Cicada Shell, Frozen Path, Corrupted Bulwark, has now been changed to a common drop. These two were garbage. However, Cicada Shell was worth a ton if you got the right corrosion. Um, so that's quite interesting. Unless it's garbage this season. I, I don't know. <coughs> ah, here's the, uh, the point. So the special equipment bases dropped by the Traveller and Plane Watchers have been uh, removed and they have been added to God of War, God of Might, God of Machines and God of Hunting. So Prisoner Ring, Aura, Aurora Ring and Surge Ring all come from Goddess of Hunting. So you'll need to do that gameplay if you want those bases, which I 100% uh, will be doing at some point. I never really used any of those um, items there, so I don't care. These also don't care. Um, oh, Graceful Ring. Maybe God of Might. <clears throat> Which one's Graceful? Prisoner is Crit Strike Damage. Aurora is... Um, energy Shield Surge... I'm not sure. I feel like Graceful is mana, so God of Might, mana. <coughs> Crafting adjustments. Tier 0 affixes will only appear in rare gear with an item level of 100. Now, does that mean that it can drop with Tier 0? Or you can only go to Tier 0 on item level 100 gear? If you can only get Tier 0 in item level 100 gear, that just means you'll filter every single item that is not item level 100, because it'll be absolute dog shit. Uh, they've changed crafting a bit. It's, it looks pretty much the same. They changed the name of Flame Sand um, and Flame Dust to Ground Quartz and um, Quartz Grain, whatever. <clears throat> Pack Spirit Adjustments. Uh, they removed a bunch of um, fluorescent memory cards. Long Farewell was probably the most expensive there. Sightless Guide was also quite good. There's been a change to who drops what card in the exclusive, so you're just going to have to look at that when we um, start the... Um, season a bunch of changes to hero memories and hero relics um there had to be a lot of changes because of the triggered and spell burst um changes and activation mediums uh, taking over that area <clears throat> added a guide and quest for city of eterna so a little bit more explained when you're starting that up <clears throat> Fix the issue where clicking the collapse quest button displayed incorrect cool tip. Hmm. Weird. Chapter 5 doesn't exist anymore, so who cares? Um, unless they revamped chapter 4 and 5? I don't know. They said it's quicker and just harder, um, which is good. Removed the newbie build system because it was absolute garbage. Um, recommend all is across all servers now, so that's cool. Energy cores can now stack up to 999. <coughs> the upper limit of a single chat message is now uh, 100 characters. Which is good. 
New accounts will receive 100 hero emblems as a gift. That means that you can unlock one of any character that you want to play, um, probably excluding the current season um, hero, because that is normally linked to the season pass. The damage upper limit goes up every single season. Um, it's now 500 billion per frame. So Iris that you had to get additional damage to life and additional damage to whatever to get past the 100 billion. Now by default will do more damage uh, because the upper limit is 500 billion, which is fantastic. Dealing additional damage to life will no longer allow damage to break through the upper limit. Okay, whatever. Spell burst, this is the big one. Um, triggered skills can no longer activate spell burst. However, you have the activation mediums to mitigate that. Um, resistance, elemental erosion resist, although they called it corrosion in that video, so I'm a little bit confused. Um, max limit of 60 instead of 75 with the cap adjusted to 90. So there must be 30% possible additional max that you can gain. Uh, resistance will no longer be reduced at 48, 58, and 80. <clears throat> so you won't be negative resistances. Um, so it's easier to get to the cap. Um, it looked like the amount that you could get on gear was also reduced. Um, reduce monster elemental and erosion damage and adjust the distribution of elemental and erosion resistance. Um, so that's pretty interesting. And there is that um, ember that allows you to re-roll a um, resistance on a piece of gear, which is pretty cool. Hero trait adjustments. Um, Personally, I don't play Rehan. I doubt I'll play Carino this season because of the um, Spellburst change, but who knows. Uh, Space-Time, Oracle Thea, Command, uh, Order Calling, Modo. <clears throat> a bit of a buff here to uh, minions, so 20% attack and cast speed. Order Modo is going to be insanely strong. Um, in the league start. Uh, Erica, Lightning Rosa, Bing, and the tiniest little change to Iris. So Iris is mainly uh, unfazed. <coughs> Bunch of changes to hero memories and relics. Uh, you can click on the patch notes if you want to read for your class whole bunch of changes there um, again it's only a few classes it's not all of them so there's nothing on iris there um, skill fixes bunch of uh, bug fixes ah this is why everyone was using speed phantom fix the issue where speed phantom and bond of archery did not consume mana I was wondering why everyone was using Speed Phantom. Um, and that's the reason, because it was bugged. Hmm. 15 mana. Looks like most of the um, aura skills have had their sealed mana reduction. Um, from 25% to 20% um, and the wording of the skills has been changed so I believe it used to say attack um, or basically it's just combined it so all damage is affected um, not just attack and spell uh, added lightning damage for example so it'll just say all or something like that <clears throat> and that's for all of those. Delayed pain, injury buffer at level 1 has been adjusted from 12 to 15%, so that's a buff. 
and also buffed at level 20, which is good. The duration has been changed from 6 seconds to 5 seconds. Stone skin has been massively buffed, which is good. Frost shield added physical and fire damage, taken adjusted from uh, minus 6 to minus 13 to minus 25. Wow, that's huge. Frost shield was already insanely strong, and that is a massive buff. So Frost Shield's still a must-have, <clears throat> which is great. New skills, Aura Amplification. Uh, that's going to be pretty insane. Disciplined. Yeah, probably not. Precise Protection Field. Friend of Spirit Magi. Support of the Spirit Magus skill. Uh, when possessed... Possessing at least two Spirit Magus, the supported skill gains plus 46% of their skill effect. Yeah, garbage. 30% increased sealed mana. <coughs> I'm possessing at least three. So it's just a buffed. Ah, oh, it's the precise. Yeah, right here. Derp. I don't really see anything else there except for safety and numbers. For each ally, ally affected by a support skill, the supported skill gains 12% aura effect um, up to five times. And the precise is 10% uh, up to seven times. Um, wait. So it's an extra 13% total. That's all right. But you need seven. So that's more group group play, I believe. Whereas a minion build could get that by itself. With a couple of Magus and uh, pets. Isomorphic arms change here. Uh, change from main hand applied to minions to minions gain the bonus of the main hand weapon. The weapon no longer affects the attack speed of minions. So you just look at the stats, not the attack speed. So you just want whatever gives the biggest range of damage, not a change to the uh, attack speed. So ignore the DPS and just go with the biggest flat damage base. This is a pretty big change for Ronan. Uh, defensiveness has been changed from block has a 0 0.03 second cooldown, which would get you killed because uh, attacks can hit within that uh, period um, and plus 25% block ratio uh, has been changed to minus 10% damage and 25% block ratio so you take a bit of a hit but you get free block ratio full defense which was insane has been changed from 100% uh, from shield immune to dot damage to 100% obtained and when holding a shield every 2% block ratio also grants minus 3% damage over time taken <clears throat> this damage reduction is subject to this damage reduction upper limit and cannot exceed 90% so you're no longer immune uh, but you can get up to 90% damage reduction from uh, damage over time looks like the base value for all armor and evasion Bases has been increased by sometimes 300% to 200%, etc. The Machine Lord Helmet looks like it might be interesting. Uh, it's changed from the max quantity um, limit of synthetic troops can now go to 2 instead of 1 as well as um, 
with at least 40 command points. Synthetic troops deal an additional 60 to 100% uh, physical damage as fire, cold, and lightning. So that is a buff to the 40. Um, oh, okay. It looks like it did that anyway. Um, it looks like an interesting helmet, nevertheless, uh, because you can have two minions. Is it enough? I don't know. But if you corrode it and get three, can it go to three? I don't know. Anyway, that is my preview for the live stream, as well as a look at the patch notes focused around Iris and minion builds. It is a pretty massive set of patch notes. I am super looking forward to the season, as it seems like we'll be getting into the end game faster and be able to uh, smash through all of that content a little bit quicker. I will be starting with Iris next season, although Automoto sounds really fun with all the additional changes and buffs. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how we go with four um, aura slots instead of three um, and all of the activation medium changes. Alrighty, that's all I've got. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in season SS4 in five days time. Thanks very much. Cheers.